Whoa, so many types of caches on the web. Caches make websites load super fast, but they can also be a real pain for us developers, especially when we are trying to fix problems. Fear not, in this video, we'll break down some common caches and show you how to troubleshoot them with DevTools. Let's dive in and start with the basic. What is cache and why do we need it? Think of a cache as a special storage box in your browser. When you visit a website for the first time, it saves files like pictures, styles, and scripts in this box. The next time you visit, your browser goes, hey, I already have this stuff, and loads it from the box instead of downloading it again. This saves time and data. Now, how do you know if a resource is cached? The network panel in DevTools is your best friend. You can view all the requests and their sizes. At the bottom, it shows the total requests, data transferred over the network, and the total time. Now, refresh the page. Can you see what's changed? Our page loads much faster. Let's put the old and new snapshots side by side and compare them. The total size transferred over the network is much smaller, and most of the requests are now served from cache. In fact, a few different types of cache. Not all caches are created equal. In general, memory cache stores files in RAM for faster retrieval compared to the on-disk cache. Chrome decides what gets cached depending on the resource size and several other factors. You can influence that by setting the resources header like the cache control. Check out this blog post to learn more. If you specify some prefetch links like this one to speed up future navigations, it will show up as a prefetch cache. Sometimes you need fresh content, especially when you have deployed changes to the production server or actively doing local development. In this example, I have a basic local development server running. When I click the button, it calls a function from my main JavaScript file. You can see the JavaScript file is cached. If I make some code changes in the function and reload the page, the output is still showing the old version. That's when you want to clear the cache and force your browser to fetch the latest updates. You can right-click any request in the network panel and select Clear Browser Cache. It doesn't matter which resource you choose, it will clear all the cache. Reload the page and test the button again. The output is updated now. Could we do both actions at once, like clear the cache and reload the page? With DevTools open, we can. Long press on the browser reload icon to perform empty cache and hard reload. As a developer, I can be forgetful and mistakenly press reload. Here we go, the page is once again cached. If you are actively testing some server-side changes, you can enable the Disable Cache option for quicker action. Whenever you refresh, the page won't be cached. DevTools does this by forcing a cache control no cache in all the request headers. The Disable Cache option seems handy, but many developers leave it on all the time, which can actually slow things down. Tools like Wit and Webpack have this cool feature called hot reloading in their dev servers. You see code changes right away. They also cleverly cache unchanged files. Disable cache kinda ruined the party. So next time your pages seem slow, check if you have disable cache on. Surprise, there is another type of cache for pages with service workers. Service workers run scripts in the background caching resources for offline use. You can learn more about service worker caching strategies in this video. For example, if this is your first time loading this page, the service worker will make tons of requests in the background after the page loads. You can filter this request with the is service worker initiated parameter. Once you refresh the page again, you will see most resources are cached by the service worker. Even if you set your internet connection as offline, the pages still work. That is amazing. But where can you inspect and disable this service worker cache? 
the disabled cache won't do the trick. In the application panel, you can see all the service worker cache content under the cache storage tab. You can also view the service worker in the service workers tab. Let's unregister this service worker and reload the page. Now, you see the page's resources are served from the disk and memory cache instead. The service worker will re-register in the background, so the next reload will fetch resources from the service worker cache again. To skip the service worker cache for a while, you can enable the bypass for network setting. Refresh the page and no more cache from the service worker. Remember to reset this setting after debugging. Here is a bonus tip. The storage tab in DevTools show how much space your service workers are using. Open the storage tab in the application panel. You can see the total size and cache storage of service workers here. We can clear the site data for everything listed here. Let's simulate a low storage quota to see what happens. Refresh the page. Our cache storage is kept at the limit. Only some URLs are cached now, and the service worker has errors due to the exceeded quota. This helps you simulate devices with low storage. It is pretty cool for testing how your site works on older phones. Ha! Huh, one last cache. There is also back and forward cache. Have you heard of them? To demonstrate, let's navigate to a few pages, then clear the network panel. Now, navigate back and forth with the buttons and watch the network panel. No new requests. That's because Chrome has back and forward cache or BF cache to cache recent navigation. Check out this video to learn more about configuring and debugging BF cache with DevTools. Phew, that's a lot of cache. But now you have got the knowledge to debug like a pro. That's all. Good luck debugging everyone. See you in the next DevTools tips. Ciao.